Okay, so welcome to chapter two. Um, in this chapter, we are going to go through another four lessons I have prepared. Basically, we're going to talk about private wallets. This is actually uh, the most important part of custodying Bitcoin. So you probably want to pay a lot of attention into this chapter before you move and uh, start learning how to use it in practice. So in lesson number one, we're going to talk about private wallets in general, what they are. And then we're going to move forward and technically explain how they roughly work. So you just get an idea of what happens actually when you use a wallet. And then in lesson number three, I'm going to discuss what types of wallets actually exists uh, or exist. And in the last lesson we are of for these type again for these type of wallets so um what a private wallet is essentially the user basically with a private wallet controls the bitcoin himself so the entire point of bitcoin is or the beauty of it is that you can completely be self sovereign and have permissionless ownership of your money with a private wallet, which means that no one, if you have your private wallet, can stop you from sending Bitcoin to any address, just like an email you can send an email to anywhere well it's not the best example with an email because you still rely on a server that you use when you send an email but theoretically speaking a bitcoin transaction is a permissionless form of transaction that no one can stop so once you use a private wallet there is just no way anyone can stop you from sending a coin or a fraction of a coin to a specific address anywhere in the world. So it grants you full of ownership of your money. And uh, of course, that comes with a lot of responsibility, just like with cash. If you go, for example, today to your bank account, uh, to your bank, and you withdraw your money in, form, in a form of cash, physical cash, you are responsible for that, right? If you lose that, it's going to be impossible to, almost impossible to find it again or to, uh, uh, to get it back, right? Because you lost it. So with Bitcoin, it's exactly the same concept or it's exactly the same thing, but it's digital. So a lot of people are confused because it's digital. They just know, they just actually know permissioned digital forms of money which is our today's fiat currencies or government currencies every form of fiat currency you see in a digital form today is permissioned there is an intermediary that you have to trust but with bitcoin you can have your digital money completely permissionless just like with cash that's why we call it digital cash. It's a digital form of money, of physical money. And it can be stored on your phone, on any computer, even on a piece of paper, or even in your head. More on that, we're gonna learn later. So just to give you an overview, this looks super complicated, but it's actually not that complicated once I explain a little bit about it. So the way a wallet works is uh, you have two types of information. First of all, a wallet is nothing but just 
information. Because Bitcoin is digital and not physical, it only consists of information. Part of that information is private and not, should not be disclosed to any, any person. And part of that information is public. So on this graph, you can see two sides of the wallet. The left side is the private information and the right side is the public information. Let's start with the private information. So under the private information, you, when you purchase your wallet, if it's a hardware wallet or software wallet, I'm gonna talk about the type of wallets in the next section, but if you download, for example, a wallet on your phone and you generate a new wallet, what you do is you generate a private key. This private key is a random number. Just imagine a very random number that is very, very difficult, if not impossible to guess, through hashing is generated and the way the wallets work today, just to make your life easier, they represent this random number in, a f in, in, in form of 12 or 24 readable English words. So what is so important about this part of the information you get from your wallet is that it's strictly private. The private key is the most important part that you need to pay attention to when you create your private wallet. If anyone knows the 24 words of your wallet, they can steal or they actually 100% can steal your Bitcoin because only the person with the 24 readable words or the private key can prove that he or she or it has access to the Bitcoin. That's it. Because there is no identity, there is no personhood necessary in Bitcoin. Everything that counts is the private key. If you have the private key, that means you own the Bitcoin because you can move it with the private key. However, there is another part of the private information, which is the public key. A lot of people, when they explain how a private wallet works, they actually put these two keys into one and uh, say, I mean, don't mention that the public key part. The public key is also private you should not share it with anyone. It is not as crucial as the private key, but it is part of your private information. You will understand why in a second. So using your private key, your wallet generates an extended public key. That's why it's called XPUB, extended public key, with which you generate your public Bitcoin addresses, okay? That sounds very complicated, but very simply put, your Bitcoin addresses are your account numbers, okay? So every time your wallet generates a Bitcoin address, that's an account number, just like the account number you know from using a bank, you know, the IBAN that you see. Um, with Bitcoin, we call them addresses, Bitcoin addresses. and you can generate as many addresses as you want. You actually should use as many different Bitcoin addresses as you want because Bitcoin is public and everyone can see everyone. I mean, no one knows who you are uh, if you haven't told them, but uh, these addresses are public information. Everyone can see these addresses. So just for your own privacy, you should not use or reuse one address twice or three times. You can, you can use an address as many times as you want. It would work indefinitely, but you shouldn't. And the reason is very simple. Let me give you an example. Let's say you sell 
your car for one Bitcoin today and you use address number one and you give this address to the buyer. The buyer, Bob, buys your car today and one year later, you sell another car to Alice and you go ahead and you give Alice the same Bitcoin address that you gave to Bob just one year later. Now, Bob knows that address number one is your address. So if you use or reuse the same address with Alice, Bob still can see your address. He can see the balance of this address. He can see the entire history for this specific address. He can see everything. So just for you to protect your privacy, you should use for every transaction another Bitcoin address. You can use one address indefinitely, but no one in the Bitcoin space recommends that for privacy reasons. So why now let's roll back a little bit. Why is this called public key even though it's private? Well, it's the same reason I told you uh, about using addresses. So basically anyone who knows your public key or your XPUB, they can see all your Bitcoin addresses, every single one of them, because that's the key that generates all the Bitcoin addresses, right? So you shouldn't share it with anyone for privacy reasons. Okay, that is why it's part of your private information. However, your Bitcoin addresses, as I mentioned, are public information. You can safely use them and share them with anyone. You, that, that, that's the use case of them. You're supposed to share them with anyone you want to receive Bitcoin from. And um, yeah, so this is about the private key, public key, and Bitcoin addresses. Now let's move on to discuss how a Bitcoin transaction actually works. So let's say you want to send uh, a specific uh, number of Satoshis or Bitcoin to a specific address. And let's say that you receive a wallet address from Alice. Okay, Alice uh, gives you her address and says, hey Bob, please send me X number of Satoshis to this random BTC address, okay? So the way it works is your wallet basically holds, or your private key in essence, um, has the capability of signing in a digital way, any transaction to prove that you actually control these addresses, right? So when you want to send a number of coins to this address that you received from Alice, you can go ahead and select one of your addresses that you want to send the Bitcoin from. Let's say you pick address number 55 uh, because you have X number of coins on there and you want to send those to Alice. And then you go ahead and you pull out your Bitcoin wallet, which consists of your private key. And using your private key, you're going to go ahead and sign um, from this address the number of coins you want to send to the receiver and verify that you actually own this private key that controls this address, right? Private key generates public key, public key generates addresses. Therefore, I herewith can prove the ownership of this specific address. Please send it to this address. Here's the proof I received it. You can see it in the blockchain. I received it a year ago. Uh, here's the receipt. Everyone in the network knows, aha, uh -huh, this guy is legit. 
he actually owns the private key. And the beauty of Bitcoin is because of its encryption, you never have to expose your private key to the public when you sign a transaction. That's the beauty of encryption, right? So you sign this transaction, everyone can see the proof that you actually have the private key without seeing your private key. That's how truth is revealed. And then the transaction is sent and miners start to take your transaction and create a block and so on and so forth. We're not gonna talk about mining. Uh, this is another part. We can discuss that in another course, but on this specific chart here, I just wanted to demonstrate you, and this is not something you need to know when you want to use a wallet, okay? This is just background information. I always find it very, very helpful when you know what you're, what the, what the wallet actually is doing when you use it. So this is very, very helpful when you see a Bitcoin address that you know what it is. It took me, for example, a long time until, for example, I understood the difference between a private key and a, uh, uh, sorry, the difference between a public key and Bitcoin addresses. I always thought uh, uh, Bitcoin addresses are public keys. That's not true. There is one public key that is actually private. You shouldn't reveal it to anyone. And that public key generates all these addresses for you that you can share with anyone. But the wallet application does all of that. You don't need to know uh, about all of this. The wallet generates the address automatically. Every time you press on receive, it generates a new address. It never reveals your public key to anyone. It never reveals your private key to anyone unless you get you get a phishing email and you reveal the 24 words private key uh, yourself or your phone gets hacked or your computer gets hacked and they steal it from your computer. So this is how a private wallet works. Now, what types of private wallets exist? Now, there's two types of wallets that exist. One is a cold wallet and one is a hot wallet. The difference is that with the cold wallet, the private key, remember, private key is the most private information that you never want to share with anyone, right? That's from the previous slide. The private key with a cold wallet is stored on an offline device. The device holds your private key and, and, and the device itself has no internet connection. So even if the hacker is able to, you know, hack your computer because your private key sits on a private hardware wallet or cold wallet in this case, he can never get access to your private key. So this type of wallet is the most secure way of storing your Bitcoin, especially for larger amounts. If I, I would say if Bitcoin is, let's say more than 5% of your wealth, you definitely should use a cold wallet for sure. Learn about it learn how to use it and use it. Um, and two more points that I mentioned here, there is almost no risk of theft because everything is stored offline. Uh, however, obviously because the private key sits on a device that is offline, you need to have it with you to sign a transaction. So you're less mobile unless you carry the wallet with you everywhere you go, which is not something I recommend, but uh, you could do that. But um, if you leave it in a safe place, for example, and you wanna send Bitcoin, you won't be able to unless you have access to the, to the device, obviously. But for long-term investors or for long-term hodlers, uh, you don't spend your Bitcoin 
anytime soon anyways so this is the perfect option for you to go so what is a hot wallet well the hot wallet is the exact opposite of a cold wallet on a hot wallet you store the private key on the device you are using which is okay for smaller amounts there's obviously more risk of theft because if your mobile phone gets hacked or your computer where the wallet sits on gets hacked, um, then obviously you're gonna lose your Bitcoin, but you will be more mobile. For example, if you are traveling and you have your hot wallet on your phone, you can send Bitcoin anywhere, anytime you want, right? So that's, an advantage of, of, of a hot wallet but um, at this stage if you are a beginner uh, you're not you know sending or you're not spending Bitcoin anytime soon so I I don't think it's the right uh, solution for you unless you want to practice obviously that's a that's a different reason you can start with a hot wallet in that case for sure for smaller amounts so Let's just roll back a little bit. I would like to make a point here. I would like to go back to the pre previous slide. So here's again this slide. You see, the hot wallet stores all the private information and public information on a device that is online, everything, okay? A cold wallet, on the other hand, stores or can store everything offline, everything. Or what most people do is you can have a cold wallet where you where you where you store part of the information. Uh, or sorry, if you if you keep some part of the information on an online device and the most critical part of the information only on the cold wallet. So the cold wallet actually has all the information you need for your wallet, everything, the private information and the public information, but you can, for example, have a hardware wallet and export your public key, this, this key here, that generates all your Bitcoin addresses into your desktop, for example, if you're in, into your phone or if into your computer. But your private key is not exported to your desktop. This way, you can see all your Bitcoin addresses and you can also receive Bitcoin on your Bitcoin addresses. You can press receive and you get a Bitcoin address. You can, send, you can receive the money, no problems. But as soon as you want to send some Bitcoin to another address or as soon as you want to sign a transaction digitally, you will need to connect your hardware wallet to the computer to sign this transaction. Okay? So just to give you some context about the difference between these two. It will make much more sense once you start using a wallet. So uh, don't get frustrated if you don't understand everything. You can actually practice using one of these wallets and come back to this section of this presentation so you will understand better what I'm talking about. So hot wallets, what are hot wallets? Um, no, let's say, sorry, uh, we already talked about what are hot wallets. How can you exactly use them? So when you use a hot wallet, as I mentioned, you can use a smartphone, it can be any any smartphone, almost any, like any iPhone or Android phone. If you download one of, for example, Blue Wallet is a great example, or Moon Wallet, you can download one of these applications and instantly generate a wallet. It will show you 12 words that you can write down, that's your backup. And there you go. You just created a Bitcoin wallet on your phone and you can send and receive Bitcoin with the phone. So a few examples, as I mentioned, are Blue Wallet, Moon Wallet, and Electrum is also one example, but Electrum is, um, Electrum is actually one of the oldest 
uh, interfaces for wallets and uh, you can run hot and cold wallets on it and it's a desktop only application so as I mentioned if you need fast access to your Bitcoin, if you want to be mobile, or if you are a beginner and you just want to experience the signing of a transaction, the receiving of a transaction quite easily without purchasing uh, a hardware wallet, this is a great option for you. You can use one of these and you know what? This is uh, a, a big, big uh, confusion in the community. A lot of people think that this is really, really, really uh, risky if you use a hot wallet. But, you know, using a hot wallet is actually 100 times more secure than using your bank online uh, internet banking access. Okay, so like just to give you some perspective about the security model this is way more secure than a banking internet access that your local bank gives you so it's not as insecure as some people say it is cold wallets a few examples here a cold card is a great uh, a little bit more advanced hardware wallet ledger Nano S or Ledger Nano X, um, great wallet. Unfortunately, they support all sorts of altcoins, but you can use a Ledger Nano S or Ledger Nano X. It's secure, it's a great interface, it's very, very uh, beginner friendly. Trezor, also great, or Kobo Vault, these are just examples, right? I mean, we only talk about wallets that we have experience with and in the community these wallets are the most reputable ones so you probably don't want to use a wallet that is not reputable in the community because there's a lot of phishing and scamming going on in 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 the in this space so just make sure you use a very reputable um brand because they have been hard tested and you know the risk of them losing their reputation to just scam a few users is just too too high, right? So use a reputable, good hardware wallet. And as I mentioned, these store your private information offline. So no hacker is ever going to be able to access your Bitcoin unless they know where you're located and they come into your place and... Uh, you know, try to steal your device. And even then, there is a pin on the device. So it is very, very secure to use one of these. So just an overview. Uh, this is the last slide about the trade-offs and the benefits of private wallets. Let's talk about the benefits first. So as I mentioned, this is way, way more secure than using any type of custodial wallet. Way more secure, even if you use a hot wallet. There is no KYC. This is absolutely private. If you receive X number of Bitcoin from an individual from a private wallet to your wallet, there is no KYC necessary. There is no intermediary between you two. It's peer to peer and it's absolutely private. And it's permissionless. No one can stop the transaction. You have full control and true ownership of your Bitcoin. Trade-offs. Of course, every benefit has a trade-off. You're more responsible. You don't want to be responsible for your money. That's probably not the right course for you. Bitcoin is probably not the right asset for you because Bitcoin is all about more responsibility and self-sovereignty. If you don't want to have responsibility, you should probably hold your Bitcoin with a custodial. Simple as that. And last but not least, there are no other trade-offs. <laughs> Use a private wallet. This is what we recommend. 
This is what everyone in the community recommends. If you are new in the space and you've just finished the first part and now this part of the courses, what I recommend is just start to open, a, open an account with one of the exchanges, buy some Bitcoin and transfer just a little bit into your, uh, let's say, hot wallet on your phone. Download the hot wallet and, you know, it will show you the 12 words, write those words down and put it somewhere secure because that's your backup, right? And transfer just a little bit into your hot wallet on the phone just to see how it works and then send some Bitcoin to another Bitcoin address. You can create two Bitcoin address, uh, two Bitcoin wallets on Blue Wallet, for example, and just send some to the other Bitcoin wallet just to see how it works. Because wallets, to be honest with you, I can go ahead and talk about this for another two hours, but you will learn way more by just using one of these wallets by just practicing, experiencing Bitcoin is the best way to understand and um, learn about it. Yeah, thank you so much for um, taking your time to learn about Bitcoin and uh, how to securely custody it. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us over email. Our website is on bitguide.io. We run a podcast on Apple Podcast, on Spotify, and we're also on Clubhouse. And we run actually a podcast room every week. So if you have questions, reach out to us. If you need something specific, you can send us an email and book a consultation. We can talk about that as well. I hope you enjoyed the course. Thank you.